Okay, welcome everyone to the Robert Show. I'm here at the Gartner Data and Analytics Summit in London uh, with one and only Josh Epstein, CMO at Scale. Josh, welcome to the Robert Show. Robert, it's awesome to be here. Such a pleasure to talk to you. Obviously, it's not that I don't talk to you every day, but... Uh, <laughs> It's nice uh, to see each other in person, for sure. Exactly, and would love to hear more about, you know, first of all, uh, about yourself. Can you introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Well, um, I'm the Chief Marketing Officer with AtScale. I've been with the company for about uh, two years. It's my first uh, season of uh, Gartner Data and Analytics conferences uh, with, with, uh, with AtScale, and it's uh, a lot of interesting activity here at Gartner, lots of themes that are right up in uh, line with what AtScale is talking about. Yeah, definitely, and looking forward to learning more about it. But why not also tell us a little about uh, what semantic layer is, sure. a little about at scale, and just for our audience to you know just uh, warm up about yeah. uh, what do you into. Absolutely. So I mean, at scale uh, was founded as originally as a vision to really deliver a modern approach to giving high performance analytics, OLAP style analytics on modern cloud data platforms. Uh, so what we uh, talk about ourselves as is a semantic layer. Right. And uh, a semantic layer platform would include uh, the ability to create logical data models that um, are, represent a single source of, of truth, a single source of metrics and dimensions and right. hierarchies that uh, business analysts can consume through whatever tool that they want. So we form a, a metrics layer mm -hmm. or a metrics store that uh, business analysts would connect their favorite BI tool, Power BI, Tableau, Looker, Click, uh, and consume a uniform set of metrics, and then AtScale manages all of the, the acceleration, all of the coordination, all the orchestration on the back end. Okay, that's very interesting. Also, uh, that kind of brings me to another important question around semantic layer itself. So, semantic layer is not a new term for us in the data and analytics space, but suddenly you see a, you know, being talk of the town, everyone wants to learn more about semantic yeah. layer. Well, certainly at Gartner. I mean, we're seeing uh, Gartner starting to talk more and more about a semantic layer. They also use the term metrics layer, metric store. Right. Um, and uh, so that, that's exciting. There's also a lot of talk here at Gartner around uh, a couple themes that are, in our minds, really really yep. tied into the semantic layer. Uh, one is this idea of, of composability and in, in, in data model sharing, yep. the ability to... Um, really uh, allow some level of centralized control and centralized governance of, of, of concepts of principles of semantics, yeah. but then decentralized innovation. So allowing your, your business units, your, your data engineers and analytics engineers that are embedded with the business teams exactly. actually build their own data products. So that, that's exciting. I, the other, other angle, we were talking earlier about FinOps. So yeah. FinOps here is a really hot topic. And uh, what's interesting is, is that the semantic layer, as it sits between uh, the data consumers, really where the insights happen, and then the cloud data platforms where the costs are generated, exactly. it becomes this really interesting hub of information for, for understanding who's driving costs, what users, what data products are actually generating those, those, those cloud consumption costs. Right. And that provides a whole other layer of visibility to, to instruments, uh, to create policies, and to really learn uh, from user activity. Yeah, so I think in the next few years, definitely FinOps is picking, and I think it's already, right? FinOps yeah. is quite hot already. FinOps has been, been around for, for years, but I think specifically thinking about applying the principles of, of FinOps, FinOps being you know, management of cloud costs, exactly. and really applying that specifically to data and analytics infrastructure is relatively new, and so that's a hot topic here. Um, it's something that we're, we're really heavily uh, looking at and excited about and, and hope to be a, a tool uh, and value to, to the data teams that we work with. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, one quick question in, uh, you know, it's something way generic, but uh, I'm sure the audience would love to learn a little about how do you see the data and analytics space moving in the next two to three years? <sighs> There's a lot of moving parts. I mean, I think it would be silly not to mention uh, all of the talk around generative AI. Exactly. The chat GPT. I just attended a great a great session on, you know, what, what are the implications for, for enterprise data teams. Uh, first and foremost, re really leveraging some of these, these techniques to, to really nail natural language query. Yeah. Right? Um, and we see a semantic layer fitting nicely in there because, you know, uh, Alexa or, or sales revenues last quarter, mm. like that works really well if Alexa knows exactly what last quarter in sales means, right? Exactly. So we think there's a nice fit there. Uh, but more broadly, as you think about generative AI and really thinking about recommendation engines in, in general beyond beyond the, the, the large learning models, are really kind of moving from 
um, you know, pure descriptive statistics of like what was revenue last quarter right. to, you know, why was my revenue down last quarter? And I think that that's really one of the interesting um, uh, challenges for the overall data and analytics ecosystem to figure out how do we do that? How do we leverage um, uh, AI models? How do we leverage semantic layers? How do we leverage, uh, you know, a more intelligent, more uh, seamless access to, to data and AI platforms in order to really create that, that better user experience? So there's going to be a lot of meeting in terms of the data analytics and AI space in the next two to three years. It's already happening out there, as yeah. you say. Uh, but this was amazing, Josh. I think uh, definitely looking forward to what's next for uh, at scale. But can you just let us know a little about uh, the secret sauce behind at scale? The secret sauce. I'd I, I say that the number one thing that um, you know, the first thing we explain to, to folks is that uh, at scale is not another data layer, right? At scale is a is a logical dating da data modeling engine, and then it's yeah. a way to actually translate those incoming queries from your BI tools and orchestrate the resources of your powerful cloud data platforms. I mean, if you look at the Snowflakes, the Databricks, the Google BigQueries, I mean, these are very powerful cloud database management systems with very powerful uh, transformation engines and query engines. What AtScale allows our, our customers to do is really l fully leverage those ecosystems, fully leverage those, those platforms while delivering uh, a better end user analytics experience. Okay. Yeah, no, I think these are amazing insights. Definitely any questions that the audience have, around these topics. Josh is the man you should reach out to. Uh, Josh, thanks for doing this. Again. Absolutely, and you know what, I'm psyched you're here, uh, talking to lots of different uh, data leaders from around the industry, and looking forward to seeing who else you're going to speak with. Yeah, and sure. uh, yeah, great, thanks very much, Robert. Awesome, thank you very much.